Welcome back everyone. Today, as you saw me pick up, or Wendy and I went and picked up the uh, lumber. So I got it, uh, I got it all spread out. Got the headers over there. I cut all the headers out. It's much easier. It, it's a better job. Yeah, it costs more money, but it's just a better way to do it. So all the headers I will make out of uh, LVLs, even though I can do a box header out of 2x10s. But don't have to mess with all that um, so first thing that I do is I get all the plates laid out and before you can even lay out the plates you've got to snap the snap your wall lines so most of the walls on this house are two by four and the great room and the garage are two by six and some of the plumbing walls inside are two by six as well but the first thing that you need to do is to make your lines. So the easiest way to do that, rather than measuring, it's a lot faster. I take two, I take two pieces of of um, two by four, and I put, I use one just to get the edge of the wall like that where it'll be, you know, because if you know you don't cut your plywood perfectly straight. Um, you don't want to go off that so you can eyeball it, but I just use that and then I just I just make a mark and I put a long tail on them and a lot of times if I'm not if I'm gonna do it later These are I was gonna do now. I kind of forgot to get the camera out I'll just put a circle around them. Obviously, you know, they're in a corner, but if somebody else is gonna snap them um, It's a good idea, but definitely I put the tail on them so this way you see here it's a little harder to see because you're on on some of the uh, the logos so I've already done these and I actually already snapped one and I remembered I forgot to get the camera so there's the first one brand new chalk line I've got a bunch of them but they, they do get worn out after a while and this is permanent this is permanent um, chalk I don't always use permanent sometimes I'll use semi-permanent um, blue is definitely will will fade off so if I do something where you're gonna see it um, but here you're never gonna see it so I don't want it to fade off with the evening dew or, or whatever if I don't get to the plates on this one and you also want it to stay because even after you built the wall you've got to use that you'll see uh, in a later later clip uh, you use that wall to uh, get the bottom straight so you've got to have that line you got to be able to see it so I'm just going to go around and do the rest of those, but it's not too exciting, but, but that's how you do it. It's a little faster than measuring it. Um, just use a block. And then obviously where there's a two by six wall, use a two by six, because then you'll know that the plates are right, because they're not always all three and a half. Some are three and five eighths. You know, it depends on the lumber yard. So you want to make sure that that inside line uh, is right so that the outside of the wall will be flush when you stand it up. Right before I get started here, I had on the last video I had uh, I know Barry was a viewer. Barry said I need to invest in a wireless microphone, and someone else said about knee pads. Um, but I have both. My daughter Brittany had bought me this over a year ago, and as usual, just like I have a two thousand dollar camera that's still sitting in the box for almost two years, probably. And knee pads I do have. Um, sometimes I'm just too lazy to put them on or get them. A lot of times too I use, I have a, like a cushion or I keep pill, old pillows that I kneel on. Because they're not the most comfortable things to wear all day. I've worn them since I was probably 17 working, which is probably why I still have good knees, luckily. Knock on wood. But um, I do try to wear them. Um, and they don't last a real long time so these are probably only a, about three months old or so but I tend to wear them out the straps break or whatever so I just wanted so I will get this uh, wireless microphone um, I got to charge it up and I got to actually read the directions first to see how to use it but I know it has to be charged because it is not so anyway I just figured I would point that out so thanks for the su suggestion on that to do it because I would have probably never taken it out of the drawer uh, it sits right by my computer and it was in the drawer so that was a thank you for uh, thank you for pointing that out to me that I should use it so I'm gonna make sure I do 
All right, so the first thing that I do when I'm doing any house or addition or anything like that is you want to lay out all the plates. So I've snapped the lines as I talked about already. So now comes what plates go where. So what you want to do is pick the walls that you're going to do first. And that's how you, how you lay them out. So you want to look, so here's our plan. I've turned it in the direction that I'm standing. So the, the front of the house is here, but I am on our bedroom side facing the shop. Um, so what you want to do first is, well, lay out the first most important thing is making sure that the toilets will fit where they are intended. So these plans weren't really, uh, you know they're drawn I we did we bought these plans so they're we got to modify them a little bit to what we want but the trust people did not take into consideration where the toilet was going to go so you cannot move a floor truss well they'll tell you you can move it up to three and a half inches in either direction but that kind of takes away from what you want I think they should have engineered this to fit what I needed it to do so initially the wall should have laid out to be here and of course I just laid it out before I looked at where the truss was so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to move it uh, seven inches uh, bigger uh, well it'll make the bathroom seven inches bigger this is all a big walk-in closet so that really doesn't matter if it's seven inches smaller um, so if you don't know a toilet has a what they call a 12 inch rough so from the sheetrock to the center of the uh, three inch uh, drain the hole that goes in the floor where when you flush it where it goes down for the pipe is 12 inches to the center um, so these are only um, uh, 12 and a half inches apart so you basically have to start in the middle of a truss or close to it so that it so that the it'll make it easier for the plumber which is me to uh, to get that where it needs to go so I had to move that over a little bit um, I moved the window which you'll see I moved the window over just a little bit um, it doesn't affect anything here because moving the shower this is a big walk-through shower that goes here um, so that didn't affect anything so what I did to make it easier um, I think it probably was supposed to well it was supposed to be right there so basically all I did is I moved it about five inches or so um, over a little bit just so that I did not have to add one more stud into there so you can see how I've laid this out um, and one of the things that I do, which probably not too many people do, um, I don't really like vertical. I don't like doing the, the wall sheathing uh, vertical. Um, but down here, they make you, they make you do it. Other, you, otherwise, you have to put all these blocks in at every joint, which makes no sense. But anyway, I put a stud. Rather than break a 10-foot sheet vertically on one stud, half on and half off, I put on every four feet I do a double stud so my sheathing has full bearing on a stud and they are nailed together so it's much stronger um, that way um, so that's the way that I do it and so every four feet as you'll see you'll see a double X one on each side that's where the wall is so there's a wall nailer that will go in here so when this wall gets built it has a nailer to hold it same thing here there is going to be just a short wall um, to divide up the closet just gives you more room you have a big closet but what can you do with it if you don't have walls um, so it'll probably be like a six foot uh, five or six foot wall just to have a little return there um, so and again this wall you want to think about standing the walls up because I build them laying down as you'll see I do it a little different than they do down here at least um, I build the walls laying down I sheathe them and I have wall jacks that lift the wall up into place so you've got to think about that um, what I like to do is build as many walls as I can before I lift any of them up 
So basically, once I get to it, I'm just lifting a whole bunch of walls. It makes it a lot easier, and it's less time that the walls have to be up temporarily supported, so to speak. So what I do is I go around and I look to see which, what makes the most sense. Um, you know, what can I get out of it first? So I'll kind of show you that process a little bit. Um, and you have to remember too, also when these are 10 foot walls and the middle are 12 foot walls, that you can't do both of them at the same time because if they're both laying down and the, the wall, you know, this floor space is not big enough. Like those are, those, uh, those are 11 foot walls even though it's a 12 foot ceiling um, I think the width of that is only 22 feet so they would be hitting each other and there wouldn't be room for the jack so when I do those I'm gonna only do one side and then uh, have to stand it up and then do the back um, so that's that's the thinking and I'll kind of show you as I go around um, how I did it and wall plates which down here have to be uh, southern yellow pine where the studs can be spruce um, they do that for supposedly the uplift strength on um, yellow pine is more than spruce but they're not the lumber itself is harder and it's usually not as straight and more knots and the ends uh, on any dimensional lumber usually are not always square and the lengths are not all the same you can even see the little hook that's in there but if you look at the end of this one you know it looks like a beaver <laughs> chopped it off. So you wanna make sure that you square all the ends uh, when you do them. And I, as I said, how I do a uh, double stud, um, what I do is, these are 16 footers, so if I'm using the entire length, I actually cut it to 16 feet um, so that I, I have a bearing, um, you know, exactly the stud will fall right at the end and then the next one that starts it, starts it at the end you know on the end of the second plate that continues it down like on this this wall this is only 15 15 feet wide or 15 and a half feet whatever it is so that's going to get cut off so you only have to square one side and i usually look to see if i'm going to be nailing somewhere and let's say i'm going to cut it right here and you don't really want to get a nail where there's a knot because on this it'll split um i'll check it in the other direction so measure off from the other side and um, you know say oh there it'll end up here and there's no knots so that's just another tip for what you want to do when you're laying out the plates so this front wall is going to be the first wall that i do that i build so when i lay out the two plates make sure this end is flush i've got the length marked on one make sure that it's flush that way and what I do is just cut them both so that you won't have to mark the second one. Use the square. Not that I can't cut it straight, but it's just a habit I've always done. It makes them perfectly square. Some people don't care about that. If it's off a little bit, I don't know. I don't I don't like it when it's off. And that's it. So I'll show you how I lay them out as well. And so when I'm actually laying them out, what I do is I look at the growth rings and you really should have them be like an arch. So if you see that like rainbow looking this one doesn't really have too much but it kind of does um, what will happen if you do it the other way and it won't matter as much on a wall but that'll tend to want a cup and sometimes it actually has a little depression um, on the underside so if you turn it the other way it um, you know it'll collect water if it's something you're doing outside with it where it's going to get wet like I said with a wall it doesn't matter as much but it it's just if you minimize any uh, if you minimize any you know any imperfections at the end you're going to have a, a perfect product if you if you allow well it's only an eighth of an inch off or it's only this or it's only that by the time you get done you're it's compounded so i, I try to minimize anything that can that can in the long run add up to make an imperfect job 
So what I do now is I will take uh, three inch, three inch screws, deck screws, and I just, I'll put three screws in this, screw it together so this way they don't move, and then I'll get it in place and um, I'll start the layout process. So I'll, when I get that part, I will show you that. All right, so once they're screwed together on the line where it needs to be, I just screw each end because the middle doesn't matter. Sometimes it will if you're bringing a wall out of the middle and you're trying to lay out all the plates at once. I don't lay. I don't usually lay out the uh, the interior wall plates till afterwards, um, just because they are what they are once the walls are in place. Um, so you know it doesn't really matter. But I just come around. You want to have the ends because again there's going to be another plate that butts into this one. Um, so. You want to make sure each, each end is down, and you don't have to do it super tight. You don't want to drive it. Some people nail it. I used to nail it years ago, but it's it's easier if, if you just use a screw because you can unscrew it. So now that can't move. So now I can lay it out. So the next step is to, the most important thing is to get your window in where it needs to be. So this one gives you from the outside of the wall to the center of the window is seven foot four and it's window a there is a separate there is a separate um, key on on the plans that show the window schedule um, I did not use what they had on there totally different kind of window I'm using Marvin casement windows um, so a here has a rough opening of 37 inches wide um, and the other thing you need to know is how many jack studs you need. Then a jack stud is something that holds up a header. Um, if you have anything over um, over five feet here, you have to use two and up to four, depending on the width of what you're holding up. So here, I only need one on either side. So you'd wanna add uh, three inches to that measurement um, for where the actual um, king stud will go. Uh, I will show you that when I get to it, but um, what you really need to know is the rough opening. So the rough opening is 37, so that is what you use and put the window in first because that is that that's where it has to go so you got to do that and then you lay out the rest of the studs and as a rule um, I always lay out from the right side to the left side because I'm right-handed um, this way I can run the tape out and mark it and it's just more natural um, if you want the rafters and or trusses to line up um, with what you're doing then you need to look at the truss plan and see uh, where they started the layout from which is probably here um, Going that way and if you do want them to to uh, Be over each other then you would have to obviously start from left to right, but this is this is a gable wall Here, so it doesn't matter which way uh, Which way I go the only other thing you could do is if you wanted to line them up with the with the uh, with the studs that you've got down in the uh, in the truss wall Then you could do that as well because this is 16 on center so the next step is to the most important thing is to get your window in where it needs to be so this one gives you from the outside of the wall to the center of the window is seven foot four and it's window a there is a separate there is a separate um, key on on the plans that show the window schedule um, I did not use what they had on there, totally different kind of window. I'm using Marvin casement windows. Um, so A here has a rough opening of 37 inches wide. Um, and the other thing you need to know is how many jack studs you need. Then a jack stud is something that holds up a header. Um, if you have anything over, um, over five feet here, you have to use two and up to four, depending on the width of what you're holding up. So here, I only need one on either side. So you'd want to add uh, three inches to that measurement um, for where the actual um, king stud will go. Uh, I will show you that when I get to it. But um, what you really need to know is the rough opening. 
so the rough opening is 37 so that is what you use and put the window in first because that is that that's where it has to go so you got to do that and then you lay out the rest of the studs and as a rule um, I always lay out from the right side to the left side because I'm right-handed um, this way I can run the tape out and mark it and it's just more natural um, if you want the rafters and or trusses to line up um, with what you're doing then you need to look at the truss plan and see uh, where they started the layout from which is probably here um, going that way and if you do want them to to uh, be over each other then you would have to obviously start from left to right but this is this is a gable wall here so it doesn't matter which way uh, which way I go the only other thing you could do is if you wanted to line them up with the with the uh, with the studs that you've got down in the uh, in the truss wall then you could do that as well because this is 16 on center and in this case I'm not sure why they went seven foot four um, they probably thought it would be the center of the wall but it is not the center of the wall and I'm not gonna have it be off by an inch so I am going to just center I'm gonna center it on this wall sometimes they'll give you that measurement because it needs to be exactly you know where it needs to be even though it's not gonna be in the center but on this one it needs to be in the center so once I get the center, I'll put the center, I'll put a center line on there, on both sides. Just so, if I need, on this one it wouldn't really matter, but sometimes you, you want that center line. So I'll put the center line there. So the window is a 37 inch rough, so that would be 18 and a half. So what I do is I take my tape like that. I put 18 and a half on the center. I'll mark each side. And then I'll show you how I mark it. But so I've got the I've got those marks and then I'll move the camera around and show you how I mark that out. There's the eagle. Oh, of course he drops down. There he goes. Right after, we were just talking about David, and I had the trust man, Steve, came here, and we were talking about it, and I just came back over to the house, and he came back. Thank you, David. So, like I said, what I'm going to do here, because I've got this laid out where my, my ladder wall, as I call it, um, you know, it's the gable truss uh, of the floor, it, it's 16 on center. And what I'm doing here is I am going 16 every 16 inches. Um, I talked about before, if you're going to have plywood fall halfway out on this, you have to go 15 and a quarter. You have to subtract three quarters off the 16 mark. Or length so the first one would be 15 and a quarter and from if you hooked on that one then all the other ones will be 16 but what I'm doing here is I am going 16 I am NOT going back the the three quarters because my four foot brakes are completely on a stud and it won't matter for inside with she, with sheetrock because the inside is not doesn't lay out like the outside does anyway because you've got the thickness of the wall so basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to go down mark my mark those you still mark them under the window but here's the window so I mark it with it with an O and an X so the O is a jack and the X is the king stud and so I'll bring this down and then you've got your cripples uh, and what I call a soldier some people call the call the uh, the stud that goes over the top of a window they call that a cripple as well um, I, I call it a soldier always have uh, when I learned back when I was 13 years old doing this um, that's what that's what you know the guy that I was working for that's what he called it and uh, that's what I've called it for all these years so um, so that's that's basically uh, how I do it and then this stays in place 
then I will just I'll work my way all the way around. So I do all the plates um, before I put anything together um, and actually build a lot of the components that will go into the wall, which I will show at another time. But just wanted to uh, to do that, and I'll, I'll give you a shot of what this looks like after I'm after it's done. Here we are on the day when all the cell phones got knocked out. AT and T, we got an AWAX flying over. All right, so here we are. So I don't do what they call a California corner. I do solid. I do solid corners. So I've got three studs solid in the corner. Um, there's a regular stud, regular stud. Here's my doubles. So the sheet will lay out full on this one, and then when this sheet goes, it'll lay out full on that one. So it's it's not splitting. You're not getting a little bearing surface. I don't like that because I don't really care for OSB uh, sheathing as it is. Um, so I, I like it to do that. It makes the wall stronger, especially when these are 10 feet tall. Um, and then here's the window. So I don't know why we don't write a jack again this is the way I've always done it so I mark it with this with an O and then an X so this is the jack stud so the header comes over to here and then what I do here is I mark it an S for a soldier and C for a cripple so that'll be below the window that'll be above the window there's my center line in case I need it here I had to catch myself because I wasn't paying attention so this is a double S. It's the same thing as what I do over there. This is where the plywood will break, is right there. And double C, because it'll break, it'll break there. Um, same thing here. Got your jack, your king stud, and just the regular layout till it gets to the end and another triple. So that's done. I'll write on it what it is, front closet wall. Because when you start, well, you have to unscrew these at a certain time, and you will, you will, um, you know, you'll be moving them around. So just so I don't have to wonder where they go, or if it was someone else doing it, even though there isn't someone else doing it, but if there was, then they would know what wall will go. And I'll actually get there's another plate that goes on top of this. Double top plate will be like that. So what I do, I'll go around afterwards. Um, I just. To me it takes longer and the double top plate is something that I don't care as much about. So if you look on this pile you'll see you'll see see how the runoff is there, runoff, runoff. I kind of pull these apart. These are fine for braces, so the trusses all get a lot of permanent bracing. Fine for that. And they're also they're okay for top plates for the most part. I probably wouldn't use that one on the top plate, but something like that is fine. So I kind of put them to the side and I'll go around. This way I'm not using good lumber. I say good lumber, um, you know, but I'm not using defective lumber um, where I don't, you know, I'm not gonna use it as a bottom and, you know, and top plate, but I'll use it as the, the double top plate, if that makes any sense. So, and they overlap each other. So this would be cut back like that when it goes because this wall is going to come like that and tie the two walls together so it'd be like that so that's why I find it easier just to go around at the end and just do it I don't have to eyeball anything I can just run this one out flush and then run one from here and go that way so that's why that's how I do it you may want to do it any way you want to do it but that's the way I found to be the best all right here's a little interim couple hours worth of laying out um, and I'll show you what all the rooms are but this is an this is a bathroom for the outside pool area which is still accessible from in the house but this way people don't have to come in that's our bedroom this is um, this is our bathroom this whole thing is our bathroom there is a toilet over here and well you get to see it um, and all the rest of this is closet and I've changed a few things around which I'll show afterwards but I'm changing the plans just a little bit and I set up my trim saw up here so that I do not have to uh, cut everything by hand um, I didn't really want to bring it up just because then I have to bring it down but we don't have any rain in the forecast right now so I will just cover that with a tarp and a blanket so I will leave that here 
so I don't have to move it every time because it's not very far but when you have to move everything by yourself it takes a little while so and of course I have it adjusted for the wind the wind is blowing this way now so I have it turned sideways so I don't get hit with sawdust and I sure as soon as I start cutting I'm sure the wind will change that's usually what happens but we'll see David's flying over me the hawk it's just squawking Hard to track when it zoomed. There'd you go. Sorry about the movement. want to see some crappy lumber all this is no good out of this whole brand new cube but I mean just look at that and if you look at the end you can't even really see it but but oh look at this look at that beauty look at how nice that one is right we can use that one wait a minute let's turn it over that's how all these are let's do this one let's look at this one together Oh, look at that. That one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. How's this one? Oh, we got two that are good. Look at the one underneath it. Out of this whole pile, I'll probably get 30 of them. That will be all right, if I'm lucky. They're going back. All right, if you want to see why I can get nothing done, you can hear the wind. Look at the sand. I'm getting sandblasted. I got to keep sweeping it off. Look at it. I won't have any sand left. It's all blue. Caps out there, the ducks don't know what to do, the geese don't know what to do. Covers are blowing off the lumber piles. If it's not raining, it's windy, and if it's not both, maybe one of these days I'll get a nice day. There's no way I can stand these walls up or set the trusses when it's like this. Impossible. measure out to measure the board. Good luck. There's something you don't see every day. Flying right over. Alright, here we are in the video. I got rain coming. It looks like it's going to come for 10 days. Oh, hi Misty. What a shocker. You're coming to see what I did, right? Yeah, I knew it. So anyway, um, we've got rain in like the next 10 day forecast. So as usual, I can't, I can't catch a break. <clears throat> yeah, I know, Misty. You can't. And one of our cats, Junior, one of the outside feral cats, um, he got in a fight and he got his leg infected. It was bleeding. So we ended up taking our, as I've talked about, our friend Gwyn that lives over there. He owns a... Um, three um, veterinarian uh, locations and he took him in this morning when nobody else would want to do that and he um, uh, did all kinds of stuff to fix him up so we're I'll show you a video on him we made him a little house that he's gonna stay in David's garage for a few days um, but anyway so I'm back on this now so here's all the plates so all the plates are laid out um, as I've showed, I showed how to do it. So there they all are. Again, this is, I'll just show you again. This will be, you'll walk into here. There'll be laundry room here. This is a, it'd be a big walk-in closet along with this is a walk-in closet. And my GoPro decided it would shut off after 10 seconds every time. So I'm using my phone. So it looks probably different, but um, <clears throat> this is actually all bathroom toilets in here. 
this is going to be um, water closet and I don't mean water closet with a toilet this will be water heater and distribution with a manifold um, for all the uh, water supply will be in there that's our bedroom this is a bathroom for the outside pool area because this will be this will be a pool with a lanai undercover porch outdoor kitchen will be there <clears throat> this is well what I'm in now is the great room and it splits off I didn't put this plate down because it'd be in my way but right here you can see there's a 30 inch wall 2 by 8 wall there on either side 30 inches and then this is the kitchen here uh, this is all 12 foot ceilings in here everything else is 10 foot ceilings so there'll be a doorway here there'll be a doorway here this is all pantry for the kitchen um, to there that is the closet for this bedroom which really will be more like an office so you'll come through the doorway doorway into the bedroom bathroom so there'll be toilet sink vanity cabinets five foot tub shower closet for that room down the hallway game room pool table slash bar whatever little seating area um, bench coat rack kind of thing there doorway to the garage you can see that spot still is there <laughs> um, there'll be a four foot deck that comes out this way goes to about where Misty is and then there'll be stairs down into the garage so that's it for the plates what I'm gonna do next is um, and you'll see it when I do the walls when I start building the walls but these all have to be marked because they're planned out as to what walls go first um, so you've got to do them in order um, obviously so as you can see that wall would go after these two walls but you can only because these are 10 foot walls you can only build one side at a time normally if these are eight foot walls you could build that side and that side but they won't you wouldn't be able to meet in the middle so you have to do one at a time on those and these are 12 foot walls <clears throat> so you definitely can only do one of those so all right so that's uh that's the story with the plates not too exciting but if you wanted to know how to do them that is, uh, and again, you can see them, you can see them marked out all along the doorway in the center, two windows here, so that's that. So I was going to try to get a shot of moving the lumber around, but I'm not sure if this GoPro, I don't know why it keeps shutting off, had a problem with the GoPro 10, and now the GoPro 11 is doing the same thing that it did so you can see I had it there as it was so let's see on yes so as usual thanks for watching I'll catch you on the next one
take the long way around. It's quite bumpy here, so can't go too fast. Everyone will be happy to know that pine tree right there. I even strapped it down because you know with my luck the vibration and the bumps would knock it apart so I got the uh, got the chop saw I got the stand I got the ten and a quarter inch skill saw I got the nail gun that I don't like but I found extra nails for that so once I run out of nails I'll never use it again um, and I did get another box that I had of the nails of the gun that I do use, but I'm going to use the old ones first. So let's bring these around and you can see the sun is disappearing. Probably not going to see that again for two weeks. Oh boy. Well, I guess we'll take the long way with this one too, even though I have to back into the... I've got to back in so that the lumber is at the inside edge of it. make for a better video. I definitely would have lost the, uh, those LVLs, not the ones on the bottom, but the ones that are on top, the smaller ones, are very slippery on one side. I'm just looking to make sure I don't hit the uh, jack on the ground. I don't doing this with one hand so I can't lift it up very close hold on a second let me lift it up a little bit that'd be better get another look at that tree and I just ordered the attachment for the GoPro so that I can uh, use the microphone so you won't have to say I can't hear you. you. You'll all wish that you couldn't hear me after you can hear me, but at least you won't be able to say that you couldn't hear me.
be able to hold this and that. But. All right, there we are. You see what I mean? It'll be light down this end, so I can set the saw up kind of where I'm standing along the edge. But I'll get light coming in this way. There's plenty of room here out of the rain. But as you can see, it's kind of dark down that end. So one of these days I'll put lights in, but not anytime soon. I got too much to do. All right, well, that was a little bonus section for you. So on with the my normal ending.